We kept uh, being told that they were coming for us. Um, they, as in uh, the police and the military. Um, property will be arrested. So we both walked out to the easement. Um, Mark got about 20, 30 feet away from the construction and uh, was tackled by five people, five officers, riot officers, and a few times they hit him. And that's when the riot line lined up on the easement and started pushing us back. I dropped to the ground and uh, first I was crying and, t and telling them those were grandmothers they were digging up. At some point we all realized we couldn't step back anymore and so we hugged each other and cried. And then two of us dropped to the ground to pray on our knees and we held up in our hands uh, tobacco as an offering to the Creator, and they didn't give us time to even put our hands down or get up. They grabbed our hands and pulled us into their line and s slammed us onto the ground. And they dragged my hand behind me uh, and were stomping on my arm to get the tobacco out of my hand. And they said, You're resisting arrest. And I said, No, I'm complying. Let me comply. And they dragged me up and dragged me closer towards the construction and me and the other girl begged them not to put us near the burial grounds and they pushed us down to the ground again where they arrested us and it was on a burial ground. They're out there because they see us hurting and they see us in pain and they see us crying and they see us, you know, mourning, you know, all the things that we've lost, you know, our spiritual tobacco ties, our sage, our chinupas and our staves were taken and we mourn those because they're spirits and there's spirits inside of those. So when they take our chinupas and they take our staves and stuff, they're taking a piece of our spirits that had been put into that. Like the chinupa the youth council was gifted is over three hundred years old. When you grab it forcefully, when you treat it with so much disrespect and you toss it in back of you, you toss it around, you toss it in your evidence rooms, it's just sickening. It makes me sick to my stomach even talking about it. You're under arrest. I think they want to say you're under arrest for being not white and praying not to Jesus or not to God. If I was a white person that day, and I was up there praying with my Bible. If I was a priest there, they wouldn't have arrested me. They would have let me go. We just want, you know, the same respect. We want them to understand that we don't do all this spiritual stuff. We don't wear headdresses. We don't dance in powwows for looks or image. We do it because it's sacred to us and it's what we believe in and it's our religion. Honestly, I, I, I get super nervous around cops now. Like, are they really there to protect and serve me? Or, you know, if someone gives them a few hundred bucks, are they going to come over here and beat me again? You know? And just like Custer did, the government did here. Morton County came with their guns. They came with their weapons. And they came with violence. And just put it on a prayerful and peaceful people. It's complete genocide. And I don't know why it's even happening in 2016. Everybody says we're moving forward. Let's not look back. Let's, but how can we not look back when it's still happening? You know, how can we recover when it's still being done? We have a right to protect our children. We have a right to protect our women. We have a right to protect our lives. We are spending our taxpayers' money on a corporation who is acknowledging sex trafficking, raping. The other day, my daughter was driving with three individuals in the back, uh, her boyfriend driving, and she calls me up. She said, Mom, there's a police car following me. I said, well, just go to the speed limit. She said, there are now three police cars following us. I said, just go to speed limit, obey the law. She said, I am. And then she said, Mom, they're pulling us over. I wasn't looking out my window. The two cops had come up 
opened my door and both of them grabbed me and drug me out backwards. I said, hey, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? What are you doing? I was screaming it. They didn't say they were arresting me. They didn't, they didn't say anything. They put me in the back of the cop car. Fargo cop, he come to my back door because it was still open. He said, I'm so sorry. If you was in Fargo, this wouldn't be happening to you. I said, I know. My two friends told me later that all the cops, after the Morton County Sheriff left, these were outsider cops, not from here. They all said, why did we just arrest them? So we got to the jail, and then they took me into a little room. Two women told me to take my clothes off, and I said, could you turn around? I'll take my clothes off for you. They said, no, we're going to stand here and watch you. I said, well, here. I held up the orange shirt. I said, why don't you just hold that up and turn your head, and I will change. They said, no, we're going to stand here and watch you. I said, well, I'm sorry, I can't do that for you. So they drug me out in the hallway. They drug me into solitary confinement. Four men and two women ripped my clothes off of me. My boyfriend was in the next cell next to me. He heard it all. They left me laying there. I didn't even have a blanket. So I pulled the mattress, I curled up in the mattress to try to keep warm. I'm not a criminal, nor was anything we arrested for had anything to do with criminal activity. Therefore, I should not be subjected to them strip searches. Honestly, everything else that has happened is beyond traumatic that I don't even remember no more. I don't even dream, but now all day I have flashes. You know what it's like to watch a little girl get pushed down and shot point blank in the face while we're trying to save her and pull her back? I don't care what anybody says, no violence. Name one of them that's been hurt. Name one cop that's been hurt. Name one DAPA worker that's been hurt. This shouldn't happen to nobody. What kind of life is that? We lived off this land, and that's all we've ever done. Then the Army Corps comes and floods us and takes all our bottom land. And we said, OK, we, we, we'll, we'll work on it. We can do this. And then now they're trying to build a pipeline out my side my door. I don't want this pipeline. My son is buried on top of that hill. Who wants a pipeline next to their son's grave? You talk about racial discrimination, sexual discrimination. You talk about political power, corporations owning America. I'm seeing it all. It's all happening right here. What did we ever do?